back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Shan Stout. And I'm Jonathan Frank. Well, Jonathan, it's a big day around here on the podcast. After all, it is President's Day. Yes, and we are so excited to be speaking with the President of the United States, Mr. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, oh. We do not have the President on the podcast today. What? They didn't, he didn't call us back? <laughs> no surprise. But we are speaking with a bipartisan pair of Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles who have served in presidential administrations in Washington, D.C. Well, I guess that sounds like the next best thing. Or even better. We're <laughs> speaking with Penny Judd, a Tech graduate and former SGA president from the class of 2000. She has a journalism degree and she went on to work in the George W. Bush administration now, today, she is a member of the Tennessee Tech Alumni Association Board of Directors and the board chair of Habitat for Humanity of Tennessee. Then, if that's not good enough, we'll be talking with Cheryl Montgomery. And today, we all know her as the Director of Program Development and Engagement for Tennessee Tech's College of Business. But before that, amazingly, she worked on President Bill Clinton's 1992 election campaign and served as a top aide to the first female U.S. Attorney General, Janet Reno. Hey, those are two pretty good guests. <laughs> well, I, I want to say on a more serious note, I am so excited to be able to have a President's Day episode of the podcast, to be able to talk to these two guests, both of them people that I uh, admire and respect so much. Penny and I serve on the alumni board together, and we were... Uh, at Senior Salute over at the Hoop last fall, she was volunteering at the Crawford Alumni Center table, and I learned a little bit about her work history. We we're just talking, and I thought, okay, we've got to have her on this program. And then Cheryl and I are kind of office neighbors over here in Foundation Hall. And when I started in this role at Tech, you know, I was kind of new, or again, uh, living back in Cookville again, and. Uh, she learned that I had previously lived in D.C., invited me out to lunch, and we just swapped stories and, and had uh, such a great time. And, and that, that gesture meant so much to me as kind of, you know, again, being sort of the new, new guy on campus. And um, I, I just appreciated it so much. And they are both uh, people that have, have served their country in high places. Well, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall at that lunch because <laughs> you guys have quite the story collection from Washington. Now, both of these ladies are lovely. Cheryl is such an asset to Cookville. She does so much for this community, including planning the annual Women's Leadership Conference, which we're all looking forward to. And Penny, she is so committed to the theme of today's episode that she even had a son born on President's Day and named him Lincoln. How about that? Now, no matter your politics, you can't help but cheer for both of these women. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, we are excited to hear both of their stories on this special President's Day edition of College Town Talk. Up first, it's our interview with Tennessee Tech alumna and former George W. Bush administration official, Penny Judd. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Our next guest is a Tennessee Tech alumni board member, former SGA president, political aficionado, campaign veteran, volunteer leader, and all-around overachiever. Penny Grace Judd graduated from Tennessee Tech in 2000 with her journalism degree and quickly set out for Washington, D.C., where she served in various roles in President George W. Bush's administration, including at the U.S. Department of Labor, the Office of Management and Budget, and in the Office of Legislative Affairs at the White House. She also served in leading roles over the span of a decade for the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA, and was appointed by Governor Bill Haslam, then reappointed by Governor Bill Lee to the Tennessee Board of Osteopathic Examination. She's also the chair of Habitat for Humanity's Tennessee Board of Directors, where she helped plan a 2019 work project involving former President Jimmy Carter. Today, Penny lives with her family in Goodlettsville, my hometown, and serves as president of her own consulting firm, Penn Avenue Strategies. Penny, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you, Jonathan. It's great to be with you here today. Now, Penny, we are completely blown away by all of your accomplishments. As I know, our listeners will be as well. But let's start by going back to your days as a Tennessee Tech student. You were obviously very actively involved on campus. You served as student body president 
what made you choose Tennessee Tech? And maybe what is one of your favorite memories from that time in your life? Yeah, thank you. So I'm from Murray County from the Columbia Mount Pleasant areas. And our youth group used to go to church camp at Short Mountain Bible Camp in Woodbury, Tennessee. And after being a camper, I worked on staff there alongside several tech students, and they encouraged me to visit campus. So I visited uh, campus and took a tour and all the things, and then also visited the University Christian Student Center, which is right on the edge of campus at College Side Church of Christ. And I just made uh, several connections there and uh, decided to enroll at Tech. Um, as far as memories go, I really enjoyed being part of the journalism department and trying to meet those late those late night Thursday um, deadlines for the Oracle and the newspaper, um, and then also being a part of Alpha Delta Pi and, uh, of course, the UCSC, and then being in the Student Government Association. But also enjoyed the Cookville community. I thought it was a really natural transition from Columbia to Cookville and uh, just really connected right away with being a part of the community. Well, I love hearing about your memories from the Oracle because they're celebrating 100 years this year, which is yeah. uh, pretty incredible to think about. So um, that's so neat to know that you were a part of that history. Penny, you know that I have a soft spot for Washington, D.C. It was my home for 10 years. Talk with us about making that jump from Cookville to D.C. You know, those roles in a presidential administration are highly competitive. How did you get your foot in the door? Yeah, so during my time at Tech, I interned with the Tennessee Department of Transportation under the leadership of then Commissioner Bruce Saltzman. And after graduating in May of 2000, which... 2000 uh, was a presidential election year. Um, I applied to work at the Tennessee Republican Party and Chip Saltzman was the chair at the time. And so when I, um, I asked Commissioner Saltzman if he would be my reference. And so um, thankfully Chip gave me that opportunity to, to serve at the party. And then also with Tennessee um, being a battleground state with Governor George W. Bush at the time and then Vice President Al Gore running, this was deemed a battleground state. And so a lot of resources flowed through Tennessee. So the staff here was able to have more relationships with the national, uh, with the Bush-Cheney team at the, the national level. So then thankfully, after the campaign, they were gracious enough to to reach out across the country to the campaign staffs to to inquire about um, to see if we would be interested in roles in the administration. Wow, Penny, what an amazing career you've had. That had to be a dream come true. And after all you've accomplished, what I appreciate about you is that amid all of your career success, you've also made time to give back. Now, one of the ways you've done that, we know, is through your volunteerism as the chairman of the board for Habitat for Humanity here in Tennessee. What have you found most rewarding about that role? Yeah, so, you know, our mission at Habitat is seeking to put God's love in action by bringing people together um, for homes, community, and hope. And, you know, I don't think it's any secret that we're in tougher economic times and a lot of families are having a tough time making ends meet. And what I love about um, Habitat is they really work with individuals who are starting to, to demonstrate the ability that they can um, afford a monthly mortgage. They start working with them on home training, homeowner training, and really moving from, um, you know, renting to home ownership. And so that brings a lot of people together. There are volunteers and partners and organizations that, that really put sweat equity in alongside the homeowner to build the home. And then they end up, you know, having a more stable environment for their family. And so many kids across our state are positively impacted by that for generations to come because they are able to grow up in a home that their family owns. So when all of that comes together, it's just a beautiful thing. Well, Penny, I have 
a, a real success story from Habitat here in our area. My cousin, her husband at I think 24 years old was killed in action. Uh, and he immediately left such a void in her life. She was a single mom with a newborn baby. You know, she was she was struggling to be able to afford, you know, any sort of daycare to be able to work. I mean, so it was it's very, very difficult. And she was chosen as a recipient for a Habitat home. And it really just turned such a dire experience into feeling like she had the support of an entire community behind her. And I think that that has changed her life over time for the better over and over again. And to have a home that you, you know, just taking that burden and that fear away and she's just doing so very well over the past many years now and um it just habitat is a wonderful program and sometimes people think well that's only changing one family's life at a time but you know that that's a big impact that will be multi-generational over time how it impacts that family I, I love that story, Shan. Penny, we are putting your Tennessee Tech journalism degree to work now with a few hard-hitting, rapid-fire questions. So the way it works is you just tell us the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay, your favorite spot in Cookville, present or past? Okay, Poets on the Square. I served as a barista there. Oh, you can't go wrong with poets. Okay, favorite place on Tennessee Tech's campus? Okay, I love the quad facing Dairyberry. I love the architecture of, of Tech's buildings. Okay, if you had not gone into politics and government relations, the career you would have chosen is what? I can't imagine anything else. I started... Uh, watching President Reagan on my beanbag at night um, when I was a young child. So I always had an interest in politics and, and government. And finally, your favorite pre now I think I might have a hint based on what you just said, but your favorite president besides the one you worked for? I think I just gave it away, President Ronald Reagan. Now, finally, Penny, we like to end each interview with the same question. And you already have answered this in a myriad of ways. I don't know what else you can tell us. But what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Yeah, so obviously the lifelong friendships you gain from, from your experience at Tech is always something that I know students carry with them and I do. Uh, but as far as just, I really appreciated the supportive environment from the university administration while serving in the Student Government Association. Um, at the time, uh, Dr. Volpe was the university president. Dr. Leo McGee was the provost and um, Mark Burnett was vice president of student affairs and our SGA sponsor. And they were so supportive. And um, I just have so much gratitude for all of the things that they sort of taught me along the way, which was really impactful in um in gaining skill sets to be able to, to work in the Bush administration. Well, Penny, it has been an honor to meet you today. Thank you so much for taking time with us today on College Town Talk. Thank you. I appreciate it. And for our listeners, you can learn more about Penny and her work today at Penn Avenue Strategies by visiting Penn Avenue Strategies. That's Penn spelled P-E-N-N, PennAvenueStrategies.com. Our next guest means business, the Tennessee Tech College business to be exact. Now, Cheryl Montgomery has served Tennessee Tech students as a member of the College of Business leadership team for more than 15 years. Now today, as the college's director of program development and engagement, Cheryl spearheads events such as the annual Women's Leadership Conference and has deepened the college's partnership with industry leaders like Averett Express. Now, she has also helped shape the college's ongoing multi-million dollar renovation of Johnson Hall. That is a task in itself. But before she brought her talents to Tennessee's college town, Cheryl was living wings up in Washington, D.C. as an aide to federal leaders, including former Congressman Jim Cooper and then U.S. Senator Al Gore. Now, she also worked on President Bill Clinton and Vice President Gore's 1992 election campaign, and if that's not enough, she ultimately served in the Clinton administration for more than five years as director of scheduling for our nation's first female U.S. Attorney General, Janet Reno. Cheryl, 
I am honored to have you. Welcome to College Town Talk. Well, thank you, Shan. It's it's a delight to be here, uh, especially on President's Day. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, that is no coincidence. You are a person of importance, and there's so much we want to ask you today. But I want to start first with those early years in Washington, D.C., and working on a presidential campaign. What an honor, what a task. What are some of your favorite memories of that particular time in your life? Well, it's hard to believe it was so long ago. And my original goal when I went to Washington was only to stay for one year uh, working on Capitol Hill and then Senator Gore's office. I had planned to stay for that year and then return to Memphis to finish my master's degree. I'd written out my resignation letter, letter walked over to my supervisor's office to hand her the letter. And she looked at the letter, she read it, she handed it back to me, and she said, I'm not going to take action on this letter today. Bring it back to me tomorrow if you still want to leave this office. I looked at her really funny, and I said, okay. Later that day, Al Gore was selected by Bill Clinton to be his running mate. And two days later, I was on the road to Little Rock, Arkansas to be part of Vice President Gore's and then Tipper Gore's uh, scheduling team at the campaign headquarters in Little Rock. So what turned out to be an, an amazing time really almost didn't happen because of that letter. So you should you should thank your boss. That was that was an amazing pause that was like, no, I'm not accepting your resignation. Sorry. Come back tomorrow. I love that story. It was yes. Isn't it interesting how life gets in the way and things just sort of happen? So I ended up in Little Rock and one of one of my most favorite memories was of election night and all the fun because you know people have probably forgotten but Many people didn't give Bill Clinton very much of a chance of winning the election. And I remember on my way driving from uh, D.C. to Little Rock, I spent the night. I stopped here. I lived in, my parents lived in Gainesboro at the time. Stopped in Gainesboro to spend the night and then continue on the next day. And I remember my parents hugging and kissing me and saying, We'll see you in a couple of months and you can figure out what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Um, <laughs> so no one really gave us very much of a chance of winning, but ultimately we did. And uh, election night was so fun. I met some, I met all these stars. I never knew or dreamed that I would be in the same room with all these people. And then the very next morning after staying up all night, uh, election night and celebrating the victory, uh, that we went to bed and uh, about 45 minutes after laying our heads on the pillow, there was this knock on the door and my roommates and I at the time we got up, we ran to the door like what's going on and the furniture company that we had leased our beds from was there to pick up the beds. So we literally oh, had to goodness. leave. Yeah, so we literally had to leave Little Rock as quickly as we flew in. It was quite the whirlwind. <laughs> Cheryl, you've just seen and done it all. That's that's a great story. I always wonder what it's like for the staff and, and the people behind the scenes who have stayed up probably more than the 24 hours that you're up. Like you're you're prepping before and scrambling and all of that. I mean, literally... You probably had not slept in a very long time and <laughs> been to lose your bed. Yes, it was crazy. We, d You literally didn't sleep. When you work on a presidential campaign, you, at the time, this is really dating me, but there weren't cell phones. And so we had pagers and you would get paged all hours of the night. And uh, my roommates and I had one car. And whenever we would get paged and someone would have to go and, and return a phone call, we would have to drive each other to a payphone at a local gas station um, to answer that page. It's just a very different time. But you don't have your life doesn't is not your own when you're working on a presidential campaign. It's 24 um, seven. So from the time we got to Little Rock that summer uh, in July, we did not leave until the very next day after the election. Not one single day off. It was crazy, but crazy fun. It was just so fun. Cheryl, I know that uh, after that campaign, you went into the administration, and I imagine that was pretty busy and fast-paced as well. Uh, of course, you were working for uh, U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno, and 
you know, regardless of one's politics, she was a trailblazer. She holds a spot in the National Women's Hall of Fame. Uh, many of us also remember how she raised awareness of Parkinson's disease. But you have a unique window into what she was like as a boss and as a person. Tell us more about the person behind the public persona. What most people don't realize, Jonathan, is that Miss Reno had a wicked sense of humor. She was always up for a good life and a fun adventure. You may remember uh, Will Farrell had a reoccurring skit on Saturday Night Live called Janet Reno's Dance Party. And the skit often portrayed her as this stern, lonely wallflower. But in the end, she got the last laugh because she decided she wanted to appear on Saturday Night Live dancing on stage with Will Farrell. Um, that was at the conclusion of her tenure as attorney general at the end of the Clinton administration. She had been asked several times by Saturday Night Live to appear on the show, but she didn't think it was attorney general worthy to do that. So she said, listen, I'll do it after I'm no longer attorney general. So the administration ended and uh, President Bush came into office and she got on an airplane, flew to uh, New York and did Saturday Night Live that evening. She was she just had this great sense of humor and uh, was a lot of fun to be with and work with under extremely stressful uh, time, obviously, at the Justice Department. Well, Cheryl, <laughs> you are just full of stories. I could talk to you all day long, but we've got to ask. After such an illustrious career in Washington, D.C., what on earth made you decide on a second act here in Cookville? Now, how have you seen the community evolve over the years? And we know that this is a bustling college town today, but I know that Cookville didn't even have its first Starbucks when you moved back here nearly 25 years ago. So tell us a little bit about that journey. Sure. I, I'm not really sure where the time goes, right? I can't believe it's been 25 years. Starbucks had not yet opened its doors when I arrived here in Cookville. And I moved back to the Upper Cumberland to raise my two sons. Cookville is a great place to raise a family. My parents are here. And at the time, my grandparents were still living and they were here. And I wanted my boys to grow up feeling the love and the support that an extended family provides. To quote an African proverb in Hillary Clinton's book title, it takes a village to raise a child. And I truly believe this. So we moved back to Tennessee. As far as how the community has grown, I really do believe in public education. And our school systems here in Putnam County gave both of my boys a great foundation. For a community our size, we're very blessed to have all the opportunities that students are afforded here in Putnam County. There's the International Baccalaureate Program that the school offers, dual enrollment, dual credit, um, and the number of sports clubs and organizations that students and kids can get involved in. We really are so blessed in this community. It's very impressive. We we are blessed in Cookville, as you say, and, and blessed that you came to the Tennessee Tech College of Business. And I know you're very proud of all the College of Business offers, whether it's the new supply chain management minor or the opportunities tech students now have to earn their BS and their MBA in four years or uh, even projects like the Business Professional Closet that allows students to rent free clothing for interviews and professional events. I know that's something you're very proud of. What have you, uh, what, what has you most excited right now about the College of Business and the opportunities it provides to students today? Two words, Jonathan, experiential learning. Over 50% of our students in the College of Business will engage in a resume building or credit experiential learning activity or project during their time in the college. For example, one of our marketing classes recently assisted a local business, Jamie's Eats and Sweets on the West Side with development of a new marketing campaign and product offering. The students are now able to talk about that accomplishment during their job interviews and a local business now has a solid plan for moving forward and increasing their sales. I just love that. That makes me so excited when I talk about that and when I hear things like that and, and uncover opportunities like that for our students. Another one of those examples is the uh, 
IT design and implementation that our students undertook last year for the exceptional being. Um, we had students that created all of the IT and the marketing website for the exceptional being. And it was just so impressive and so fun to see that play out. So experiential learning is a huge part of what we do in the College of Business. And I can't wait to see how that plays out with the supply chain and operations management program. That's a new minor that we have here in the College of Business. And that's thanks to another local company, Averitt, and the partnership that Tennessee Tech and Averitt now enjoy. It'll be really fun to see that over the next 12 months and how those experiential learning opportunities unfold. Jonathan and Shan, you'll have to have me back and some of our faculty to talk about those opportunities. We will, and I want to say we actually had uh, Jamie Lankford on the program recently, and it was great to be able to ask her about that and get uh, her perspective because uh, she also just raved about the work that the College of Business students did uh, for her cafe. Well, that's great. I love to hear that. Experiential learning really is uh, an important part of your work in the College of Business as a student. And knowing that we help the local community succeed and grow their businesses at the same time, it's a win-win. Well, my daughter is currently at Tech and she's going through this whole process. And I appreciate how thorough Tech is on giving these real life opportunities because that helps them see what their job will be like in the workplace. And it, it has been very good for her and very challenging. She's like, oh, this is so hard. And I said, honey, that's just a regular day at work <laughs> when you take on that role. Like that's what, you know, that's what I would be doing in my job, you know, tomorrow. So I appreciate that uh, experiential learning. I mean, that that's really useful and gives them a, a real view emotionally and mentally on what what these roles can accomplish uh, in their in their job as they start a career. Now, Cheryl, now this is this is the first time you and I have never done this before. Jonathan normally is our rapid fire question guy. So this is my first time to do the rapid fire questions. Now, we asked these same questions to our other guest today, Penny Judd, who worked in the Bush administration, and we want to hear your answers too. So you're just going to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Your favorite spot in Cookville? Blue Pig. Love oh. their back porch. Whenever I have people who've come in from out of town in D.C. or other places, I always take them to the Blue Pig. Love it. Favorite place on Tech's campus? The Quad at Christmas time. Oh, the lights, they just get better every year. <laughs> okay. If you had not gone into politics and working at Tennessee Tech, what would be the career you would have chosen instead? History professor or public relations executive? Wow. And finally, your favorite president besides the one you actually worked for? So that's LBJ, President Johnson. While he was only a one-term president, he accomplished so much. The Voting Rights Act, he ushered in the Great Society. He was a powerful politician who understood the art of compromise and made our country a better place. He pushed us all toward a more perfect union. Well, Cheryl, we have loved this conversation. I feel like I've learned so much. Uh, we like to end each interview with the same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Well, Jonathan, I owe my very existence to Tennessee Tech. My parents met in Memorial Gym and were married two years later. And then two years after that, during the administration of President Johnson, I was born. Oh, that's so sweet. Cheryl, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Oh, thank you, Shannon and John. It's been so much fun. And for our listeners, learn more about the College of Business at Tennessee Tech by visiting tntech.edu slash business. We want to thank Penny Judd and Cheryl Montgomery for being our guests today on College Town Talk. We certainly do. And thanks to all of you for spending your President's Day with us. Be sure to check out a written story based on some of the great insights that Penny and Cheryl shared with pictures. It's on our website, tntech.edu. Join us again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville 
Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.